That takes us on up to Orlando where Mike's got a question about his 2020 Jeep Wrangler. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, how you guys doing? You're doing good, Mike. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, not, the, not the first time I've called. I've ha- actually had my uh, vehicle in your shop in the past, two vehicles. So I'm, I'm not a movie to you, and I appreciate you very much. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm almost going to call this the Wrangler Hour because, uh, yeah, I own one. <laughs> I've, I've beat up on all these Wrangler folks so bad, man. you you got to have guts to call in with another Wrangler you know, today. Yeah, I know. I, I figured you'd rise me on it. I appreciate it, though. You had a laugh out of it. You're going to cry. I don't know which way you go. Hey, the, but, um, you, you, you've got you, you can You can get good service out of the vehicle. But you got to follow a little. There is some science to my madness. I'm not kidding you. Um, no, I believe it. Oil, oil for that motor is so critical. Um, well, if, you, if you listen, yeah, if you listen to the show, you know when we get all these clicking, ticking Wrangler calls every week, there has got to be something to it. All right. Yeah. So I've got you as a convert. Go ahead and tell me what else is wrong with it now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I run into, in fact, I had a new shop at five grand from being new, and it's, it's had nothing since. So all right. Zero W thirty. Good deal. Um, yeah, and I, I understand it all. Um, now, on a different note, a different question, uh, we're not used to hearing, uh, maybe you are, but I'm certainly not. Now, you guys are aware, uh, I talked to J.D., your shop manager, earlier uh, this morning and ask them just a couple general questions so it extends from that but um i'm having a, um as you know you have the auxiliary battery and the main battery mm-hmm. um now they get kind of complicated with this and there's a lot more involved we don't have time for on this show obviously but i understand how it works and all of that, all the voltage situations now here's the thing recently the auxiliary battery goes right okay and then the main battery get the main battery gets ate up okay because of this battery now, I'm not saying I buy all that, but here's the deal. I do have an extended warranty, so I take it to the dealer to save money. I don't say which one. I wouldn't do that on the radio. I understand. You Thank you. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so they, you know, they do their thing, do their thing. I've been in and out. I'm, this has been going on for three weeks now. I'm frustrated. So they don't know what's causing. What I have is, since that worked, the, the voltage has always been at 14, 1, 14, 2 on the dash. No problem. Alternator reading, fine. I get that stuff. I go. I come from the 80s. I've worked on all my vehicles. I'm 58. So the thing is, now it dropped. Since this battery issue, it dropped to 12, 4, 12, 6, 12, 8 if you're lucky. Now, as far as I know, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but that voltage running down the highway with nothing on is like climb, descending down a mountain repelling with 80-pound fishing line. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but that voltage doesn't sound right. And now they're telling me, oh, no, it's well within the range, but not in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is, if it's not the two batteries, what are we, where are we going? There's only so much in there. There's the, there's the electrical, uh, electronic, um, what's that gizmo on the negative battery sensor? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and then that feeds into the ECU. So something, you can tell me what you think, something's causing that alternator not to produce uh, 14 volts. You're 100% right. right or you are 100% right. I would have never knowingly released that vehicle not charging any more than that. Mike, I, I'm going to tell you what I do in a case like this. I mean, you know, we got wiring harness, we got fuse relay center, we got stuff, electrical stuff all over that vehicle. Who knows why we've got the issue? But when I get something like this, I've got to just clear my head and find out, you know, I, I got to cut out the middleman, so to speak. I, I, I go from the back, the positive off the back of that alternator, and I run a daggone new wire straight to the battery, and then I check and see what's going on. And if that doesn't give me the satisfaction that I'm looking for, I'm going to run, I'm going to take a pair of jumper cables, and I'm going to find me someplace on that alternator. I'm going to pinch one of them right onto the bracket or the side of the alternator, and I'm going to take the other one uh, straight to the negative side of the battery. 
I, I want to make sure that I don't have something in the harness somewhere that is interrupting or uh, you know dropping my voltage down like you're dealing with here. Um, there, there's got to be something somewhere. I'd really have to look at the wiring schematic to see if the computer itself is actually what is the demanding the voltage out of the alternator uh, for current. Um, some of them, you, this stuff's getting crazy. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Um, you know, the computer itself in some cases has to demand the voltage out of the alternator before it will actually put it back up to where it needs to be. Um, you know, just by changing uh, the batteries out shouldn't have created uh, an issue like this. That's the reason, you know, I, I don't think that they would have disconnected something or not hooked something back up um, just investigating this battery issue. But, you know, I agree with you 100%, Mike. I, I would be scared to death to drive this thing at night with the headlights on, the AC on, and the wipers at the same time. I don't think you're going to break even with it. I think you'll actually wind up discharging if you're not really producing more amps back into the batteries than you are currently. I, I, I appreciate the, the call. Um, you know, it's kind of like this. I, I, would, I would suspect the vehicle to be under warranty. Um, if, if you don't find any satisfaction... Uh, you can run it by. I'll take a quick look at it. Or either, like I said, it wouldn't take a whole lot of time, which I don't have much of when I'm at the shop. But to actually just run some jumpers, you, you know what I'm saying? Some alligator, some heavy-duty alligator clips made from the positive back of the alternator to the battery. And then a, a ground. You know, a lot of times you can do that if you've got room with a pair of jumper cables. Use those as your test leads. But that's kind of what I would wind up doing just to see see if it was an injured alternator or there was something in the circuit that was actually giving me issues. And if you need a wiring schematic for the charging system on that, you're welcome to come by the shop and Mir JD1 will print it out for you and then you can go on your hunt yourself if you'd like. But uh, we'll, we'll, we're, we're there if you need us. I appreciate your call. Thank you so much, Mike. That leaves us with one quick segment left in the Magic Mechanic Show today. We're going to save that for Larry and Marty. 